Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. Today I am gonna be talking about norms and why they are important in the context of machine learning. So let's get started. In simple words, the norm is a quantity that describes the size of a vector. Now please remember that when I say vectors, I don't mean the vector quantities that we study in physics. Rather something that we can represent using a set of numbers. As you might already know that in machine learning, everything is represented in terms of vectors. For example, let's take the feature vector. Suppose our set of features contains two elements, x1 and x2. So we can represent the features as a two-dimensional vector. A is such a 2D vector. Here I will be working with only two dimensions, partly because I can't really animate 3D and the concept can be easily extended to the higher dimensions. Ok, let's visualize the vector A. Yes, the red point is the vector A. Let's have another vector B. So now, the question is how can we measure the size of the vectors? Well, the most intuitive thing I guess is to measure the distance of the points from the origin. For the vector a, the distance is 5 and for b, it's root 2. The thing that we just calculated is called the L2 norm. Yes, the Euclidean distance is the other name of L2 norm. As we all know, the formula looks something like this. But is there any other way to measure the size of the vector? Yeah, there are. To be precise, an infinite number of them. The trick is to change the number 2 in the formula. Let's change this to 1. Well, this time we are effectively adding all the components of the vector. And this is called the Manhattan distance, aka L1 norm. Visually, it looks like this. So, if we want to generalize, then we can say Ln norm is the nth root of the summation of all components to their nth powers. Let's explore the behavior of the norms as we increase n. First, I am plotting every vector that has an L1 norm equal to 1. Every point on the circumference of the square is a vector with L1 norm equal to 1. But what happens when we do it for the L2 norm? Any guesses? Well, it becomes a circle. And it's actually easy to guess because in the equation of the circle in 2D, there are square terms, right? And in the formula of L2 norm, there are squares. So it makes sense, right? Every point on the circumference of the circle has L2 norm as 1. Let's see what happens to the circle as we increase n. We can clearly see that as we increase the order, the shape approaches a square. But wait, how did I even calculate the L infinity norm? Well, I just took the limit of the formula as n approaches infinity. It turns out that L infinity is just the maximum component of the vector. Now that we have a very good understanding of the norms, I'm gonna mention some of the places where norms are used. The most common use of the norm has to be in the famous mean squared error cost function. The sum of the squared differences between ground truths and predictions are nothing but the L2 norm of the resultant vector formed by subtracting vector of predictions from the vector of ground truths. Another use of norms can be found in regularization. In ridge regularization, we put a constraint on the weights. And the constraint says nothing but the L2 norm of the weight vector should be greater than or equal to some positive value. Visually, the optimized weight vector should lie outside the red circle. If we talk about lasso regression, then the constraint becomes L1 norm. And in this case, the optimized weight vector should lie outside the red square. So that was all for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share this video and subscribe to this channel. Stay safe and thanks for watching. Okay.